Geologic cross sections are a two dimensional snapshot of essentially a slice of Earth's interior. And they're very useful for trying to interpret geologic conditions that have occurred in the past. Creating and interpreting or evaluating geologic cross sections are extremely important for geologic professions. For the purposes of our discussion for this week, geologic time, geologic cross sections are very important for understanding relative ages. So essentially what occurred older or what occurred younger. Now geologic cross sections depict two main things that are geologic events and geologic structures. Now geologic events are things like depositions, so sedimentary depositions, um, like shale formations or sandstone formations, or they can also be igneous or metamorphic formations. The structures, we've talked about two main ones last week in structural geology, and those are faults and folds. Now faults are those cracks that are sudden slippages that occur inside Earth's interiors, and folds are those geologic structures that essentially form dome or arches or bowl-like depressions. The new one that we're discussing this week are unconformities, which are periods of non-deposition or missing time in the geologic record. Essentially think about it as erosion that had once occurred a long time ago. And what is essentially left is a now planar feature that represents that period of either non-deposition or erosion. And we talked about three main unconformities. Those are angular, non-conformities, and disconformities. Geologic cross-sections um, can be complex to interpret, but using those five main physical principles of relative age dating, will be very useful in helping you interpret the ones that are outlined in the PowerPoint, the one that's in the assignment for this week, but also for the extra credit assignment. So let's take a look at an example of a geologic cross section. So here we have a pretty good example of a geologic cross section. And here you'll see these, um, these different beds, essentially these planar continuous beds that are moving across the screen and they are labeled as C, B, and A. The different colors but also the dots and the lines and the boxes depict different types of rocks that are present. These are just symbols that are generally used that geologists that we can use to recognize certain formations. And then we also have this feature that is cutting the way it crosses screen, which is labeled D. That is essentially a very good example of what would be some kind of intrusive feature. This is an igneous dike. And then we have E, which is pointing to a line, which is essentially showing an offset of some of these planar horizontal beds. So what we are trying to do and interpret in this geologic cross section are what is the oldest event or structure that has occurred within this geologic cross section? Oldest being, what is the first thing was either deposited or occurred? And what is the youngest? And then at what is all in between? So when you are trying to interpret geologic cross sections, the easiest thing I like to do is work my way from the bottom of the screen to the top. So essentially the bottom of the image to the top of the image. I like to scan first. So I see one event, which is C. I see a second event, which is B. I see a third event, which is A. I see a fourth event, which is D. And then I see a fifth event, which is E. Now, which one likely is the oldest? Now, for using our principle of horizontality or the principle of superposition, we know that the oldest stuff will likely be on the bottom and the youngest stuff will likely be on top. So in this case, C will be the oldest event or formation that has occurred on here. Thus, everything that's deposited above it, for the most part, is going to be youngest. So if that's the case, then C is the oldest, B is the second oldest or younger than C, and then A must be younger than B. So in this case, the ordering of events would be C first, 
B comes second, and then A was deposited third. However, we have a couple of weird things that are going on. We have D, which is cutting its way across all of these horizontal beds. And then we have E, which it looks like it's offsetting these beds. So which do you think came next? Well, because E is offsetting all of these beds and D cuts its way across through all of these beds, we, mo we know that D and E must be younger than C, B, and A. So which is older than the other, D or E? Well, D cuts through all the beds, but then E then offsets D, which means that D must have already been there in order for it to be an offset by E. So D, as it's cutting its way through formation C, B, and A, which is then offset by E. So if we're ordering these events from oldest to youngest, it would be C, B, A, which were all originally deposited horizontally, and then D, cut its way through. It would have originally looked like this. And then you have the faulting of E, right? Which is then offsetting it. Now thinking back to uh, structural geology, what kind of fault is this? Remember here we have our foot block because it looks like a foot. And then we have our hanging wall, which is on the opposite side of the fault line of the foot, of the foot wall block. And it looks like a, B, and we're missing C, which would probably be down here, have slid down relative to the foot block. So this would be a normal fault with the maximum direction of stress coming this way. So this is a pretty good example of uh, how to interpret geologic structures. And here we essentially use three of the physical geological principles of relative age dating, which is the principle of horizontality, and the principle of superposition, and then also the principle of um, cross-cutting relationships with D cutting its way across through all of these.